When a group of businessmen took over MG Rover about 10 years ago, everyone thought it was a day to save the famous British automaker. Unfortunately, a few years down the line, when the car company collapsed with millions and millions in debt, it became clear that some of the actions taken by directors weren't as honest as it may have initially seemed. Uh, this week, those directors, so-called Phoenix Four, have agreed not to be directors in uh, British companies for a few years. I'm now joined by Chris Roebuck, who is a visiting professor of transformational leadership here at Cass Business School, and he's held senior HR positions in many international organizations, including banks. And he's an expert on improving organizational performance through people. Chris, um, this was one that all journalists had a very close eye on, a very famous car company. I mean, what really went on here? I mean, what was at fault? Effectively, what happened was that, that this particular group of directors were able to extract money from the parent company through a, a number of subsidiary companies. And although it's obviously clear that they technically didn't do anything illegal, uh, the consensus of opinion was that what they did do in terms of extracting that money for their own use was certainly immoral. Uh, and if uh, it had continued uh, any longer, um, it's perfectly clear that uh, as far as the employees were concerned, it was unacceptable behaviour. I mean, obviously, when we talk about unacceptable be behaviour, employees are basically lost what they were owed in salary, pension, etc. I mean, what does this say about the nature of uh, corporate leaders? What it says is that actually, statistically, if you look at all the corporate leaders we have, there are some people who go out there and they take a different view of the morality and the integrity required in leadership roles. This particular group of people, and it's fair to say, you know, within a, a corporate environment, sometimes leaders accidentally slip into doing things due to pressure and stress that are immoral. But this particular group of people, in a planned, consistent and long-term way acted in a way that most other corporate leaders would see as being immoral at the very very least and as far as that's concerned that's something that has actually degraded and stained the reputation of British corporate leaders. I mean, this really gets to the heart of what a company is about uh, to society I think and uh, to some extent these four people owned MG Rover they were the sole owners of the company. So shouldn't they be looking after their own interests? Uh, after all, uh, it's not for society or employees that arguably uh, that's uh, what they could say. Well, certainly as directors of that particular company, they have a legal duty to act in the best interests of that company, not specifically the shareholders, not specifically the employees, and obviously not society. So, you know, there is a, a criticality there to act in the best interests of, of that company. And there is an argument to say that they might not have done that. Having said that, as I stated previously, they haven't done anything illegal. There's just a significant question about the morality of what they did in this particular organisation. And it underpins and questions the whole ethos of what being a, a corporate leader is about. And it's absolutely clear that there is an assumption that the leaders in organisations will act in a moral way and will act with integrity. Because when you ask employees what are the most important things that you expect from your leaders? The one that comes out time and time again as being the most important is acting with integrity. Chris Roebuck, thank you for your time today. Thank you.